So, what are your feelings right now? Oh, they're mixed, you know, we, we've come to the culmination of all these years of effort with a grandiose finale. It, it really was a fitting end to such a fantastic mission, but it's not the end. We, we have this mixture of sadness because we've lost a family member. This spacecraft is in people's lives for many, many years. And even for me, for only three years, it has become a family member, and now that family member is gone. Mm. But the data that it has taken will enable us to do an amazing amount of science, and that will be the legacy of this mission. This fantastic mission already will become even bigger because of the science we can do in the future. You've got the shape of the duck in the first place. This, this, this comet looks like a duck, it's by low. We've seen by low comets before, but not like this. We have analysed it to get a better feel of the fact that it, ha it appears to be caused by two comets coming together. The comet itself is covered in a layer of dust. We have fantastic measurements of the internal makeup of the comet itself using concert but also the radio science measurements. It appears to, it appears to be very fluffy and porous inside and that kind of matches up with some of the, mis the, the uh, emissions of dust that we see in the coma. So we have also the pictures of the surface to give us an idea of the morphology, the evolving geology that we're seeing, which is a new science for comets because we've been there for so long, we've been there for over two years, we've seen changes in the surface of the comet. We will then go back and see how that has changed over time and how that has uh, in, in, imparted changes in the outer atmosphere, changes in the activity that we see. So we match all of that together to get an idea of how the comet works. The stuff that's coming off, we've been measuring that, the molecules, we've got an idea of matching the water that we have coming off the comet and looking at Earth and saying it doesn't match very well. But there are organics on there that mean that possibly comets could have delivered the ingredients for life many, many years ago. And also the other molecules that we've been detecting give an inference of how the comet formed many, many years ago and maybe a little bit about the evolutionary processes that have gone on. So you add all of this together to get an idea of how this comet formed and how you put that into the broader picture of the solar system's evolution since the beginning. And even some of the material we're detecting could be primordial in that it was there before the, the sun ignited. So yeah. there's broad ranged implications here and that's just scraping the surface. We've only just started. Indeed, indeed. And, and when now thinking the very large photo that we saw today, we saw some pebbles, what, some, some stones. How, what, what, were, what do you think we saw in the photo? Well, this is something that's been, become strong and as I was referring to before, this geology that we're seeing, the, the, the surface features that we now match up also with the coma and the atmosphere, the dust in the atmosphere, the fractal-like nature of this, and we look down to say, well, how has this comet formed? How has it gone from nanometre scale to the kilometre scale? And that's the bit that we'll be doing now, is matching all this together. How does this stuff stick together, and why do those blocks exist there? Why is there a granularity of the surface as well? What is the difference between these blocks and the dust layers around it? This is probably an evolutionary process. We know that uh, a lot of the southern hemisphere is kind of dumped onto the northern hemisphere because of the seasonal effect that we see on the comet. All of that is going to be pieced together and it's incredibly important to have had these measurements, these high resolution measurements, to see this material. Also to cross compare, don't forget with the Rollis descent as well, we have a nice comparison between those two descents. We've done it twice now, in different places, brilliant. Or in fact this was the fourth landing? Well it depends, I mean for <laughs> Rollis we, we only, for descent, we only had the two sets of images. Yeah, so. yeah. Right after the loss of signal I saw that you were a little bit like cry. What were your feelings then? I, I can't explain what was happening there because I didn't think I would be that emotional. It was just, it, I, I just became speechless. I think I'm very tired. I've been here since about 3.30 in the morning, as everyone else has actually, mm. and we've not been sleeping very well because we knew we wouldn't have much more time with the spacecraft. So I, I just could not put into words my emotions at that time, other than this spacecraft has provided us with such a, I should say, both spacecraft, the mission, so Philae and Rosetta, have provided us with this gold mine, this fantastic amount of science, and also has inspired so many people as well, not just in science and engineering, but in all walks of life, art and music as well, so it, it, it means so much to everyone, and that part of it has ended, so yeah, I, I can't describe still what my emotions, but they're mixed, happiness and great sadness for the loss. Yeah.